Hello, everyone. Welcome to session two of LTEC 676. I want to begin this week's video by saying great job on the first round of Critical Reflections. Your videos were engaging and raised a number of important concepts about the factors that might shape one's professional views on technology. Some of you pointed out that different people see different things based on their positionality in the world. Others made historical comparisons about how professional perceptions of technology can and do change over time. And still others made the argument that it all comes down to how you define important terms, such as collaboration or access or success. In short, I'm really pleased with your effort, and I want to encourage you to keep bringing in those outside resources and making explicit connections to the course readings in your reflections. Okay, that's all for now. We'll talk more about the professional views on technology questionnaire toward the end of the video. When we left off last week, we were talking about what an educator should know about educational technology. And to help frame that discussion, we talked about society as a group of people who live in a defined geographic area and who interact with one another and share a common culture. We also talked about the number of social ills or social problems such as poverty, privacy, inequality, and discrimination, and how certain institutions or initiatives such as education and technology have been created and maintained to help address some of these problems. Now, as you probably noticed from the week one reading, is that all of these forces, of course, are interacting and pulling and pushing against one another. Now, in the first couple of weeks of the course, we are going to be focusing more on the first half of the course title, the educational technology. And in particular, we're going to be focusing on that word technology. And this is really going to set us up to be start thinking about the social and ethical issues in educational technology. But before we can do that, we really have to have a firm grasp on what is technology in general and educational technology in particular. So with that in mind, we're going to begin our first theme of the course, which is the nature of technology. Now, why would we be interested in the nature of technology? Well, the answer to that question is it's part of a meaningful technology education. In other words, if we want to have a solid foundation, a meaningful technology education, there are a number of things that we need to know about as students of social and ethical issues in educational technology. So what are some of the things we need to know in order to have a meaningful technology education? Well, of course, we need to know how to use technology. And to be honest, a lot of schools are pretty good at helping students learn how to use technology. However, they're not so good in some of the subsequent areas, such as what technology is, how and why technology is developed, and how individuals and society direct, react to, and are sometimes unwittingly changed by technology. So a meaningful technology education is going to encompass all four areas of understanding. And this brings us to the nature of technology. So what is technology? Well, a lot has been written about the nature of technology. And here's a famous book in 2009 by Brian Author, who argued that technology, in fact, is one of the most completely known parts of the human experience. Yet of its essence, the deep nature of its being, we know little. And Arthur argues that there are three meanings of technology. The first meaning is of individual technologies, which are a means to fulfilling a human purpose. The second meaning is what he calls bodies of technology, such as semiconductors or robotics. And he argues these are an assemblage of practices and components. And the third meaning of technology is the entire collection of devices and engineering practices available to a culture. 
Now, it's important to understand technology at these three levels. So when we're talking about technology, we need to be specific as to what level of technology we're talking about. An individual technology, a body of technology, or the entire collection of devices and practices available to a culture. Now, this brings us to 10 concepts related to the nature of technology. Now, the first concept is that technology is broad. It includes artifacts and the processes that created those artifacts. Examples of technology include, among other things, tools, machines, things, symbols, objects, and techniques. So some questions related to that concept that we could continuously ask ourselves is, how is Google a form of technology? How is democracy a social technology? How is fire a technology? You could fill in the blank with whatever you want, but you should challenge yourself and ask, how is this thing, this object, this process, this technique, how is it or is it not a technology? The second concept related to the nature of technology is that technology is developed for a particular purpose, but its impact may reach beyond its original purpose. When contemplating that idea, some questions we can ask ourselves include, for what purpose was blank technology developed? For what other purposes might it be applicable? Our third concept is the idea that biases are inherent in technology. So we continuously want to ask ourselves, how does the purpose and limitations of blank technology predispose us to employ it in particular ways, thus impacting decisions and other actions? The fourth concept related to the nature of technology is that technology is a Faustian bargain. When a new technology emerges, something is gained and something is lost. And we have to challenge ourselves to ask what positive outcomes occur by employing this technology versus the negative outcomes. The fifth concept is that technology changes human behavior. So we can ask ourselves, how has blank technology changed human behavior in ways that were anticipated versus ways that were not considered? Those are important questions. The sixth concept related to the nature of technology is that technology changes human thinking. How has blank technology changed the way humans think? Concept seven, communication technologies impact privacy, personal space, and quiet time for reflection. And here are several questions we can ask ourselves, such as what has been gained and what has been lost with communication technologies? The eighth concept is that technology promotes a positive, forward-looking mentality that suppresses a balanced and accurate examination of its actual impact. Some questions related to that concept that we can ask ourselves. The phrase technological process is commonly used. Why do we not have an equally common phrase for the downsides of technology? Concept number nine, the process by which technology is developed is linked to and thus constrained by already existing technologies. So we can ask ourselves, how is this classroom interactive whiteboard similar to chalkboards and whiteboards? Why do you think this is the case? And concept 10 is that technology influences human values. An example, how have cell phones altered family values? How has technology altered relationships? Taken together, these are 10 concepts related to the nature of technology, and I would argue these concepts are central to what an educator needs to know about educational technology. For the last portion of the video, I want to take a look at the results of your professional views on technology. So 11 people out of 12 responded to the questionnaire, so let's take a look at some of the results. Now, one of the items near the end asks you to indicate how often you integrate computer technologies in your professional activities. And as you can see here from the pie chart, six people said all the time. That's the red color or about 55% of you. Three people said almost always. That's the blue. And two people said frequently which is 18.2%, and none of you said occasionally. So this tells us a little bit about who is in the class from a technical perspective, as does this statement, which asks you to determine your level of proficiency with computer technologies. 
And as you can see from the pie chart, one person said an expert, that's the yellow slice. Seven people said advanced and three people said average. Okay, interesting. Now that we have a little bit of background, let's look at some of the results. Recall that we agreed or disagreed with 33 statements about the use of technology in education, and we did that using a seven-point scale, where one equaled strongly disagree and seven equaled strongly agreed. So overall, how aligned are we in terms of our professional views on technology? Well, the class average was 4.28 with a standard deviation of 1.84. In case you aren't familiar, the standard deviation is a measure of the amount of variation or dispersion in the responses. The person with the lowest average score had an average of 3.21. In contrast, the person with the highest score had 5.09. That's a difference of 1.88 points on a 7-point scale, or about 27%. So you can see here, we're hovering around the middle of the scale, perhaps a little bit higher. So you're probably wondering, well, what statements did the class agree and disagree with the most? Well, let's take a look, and keep in mind this is based on 11 responses. There were two statements that tied for being the most agreed upon by the class. The first statement was number seven. The use of technology in education is a valuable instructional tool. As you can see here, the average was 6.36, .36, so nearly everyone in the class agreed or strongly agreed with that particular statement. The second statement we largely agreed upon was number 18, which read, the use of technology in education enhances my professional development. Now, which statement did the class disagree with the most? That happened to be statement number 17. And that statement read, the use of technology in education is unnecessary because students will learn computer skills on their own outside of school. So as you can see here, almost everyone tended to disagree with that particular statement. So now let's take a look at the most controversial statements on the questionnaire. I've selected the top five statements based on the items that had the highest variation in their ratings or responses. In other words, I've ranked them based on their standard deviation. So the fifth most controversial statement was that the use of technology in education requires extra time to plan learning activities. Interesting. The average response for that was in the middle at 3.45, but as shown, the standard deviation was over 1.5 points. So there was some considerable variation about whether you agreed or disagreed with that particular statement. The fourth most controversial statement was that the use of technology in education is an effective tool for students of all abilities. There was quite a bit of variation around that. The third most controversial statement was that the use of technology in education is effective only when extensive computer resources are available. Again, we see a standard deviation of 1.69. The second most controversial statement was that the use of technology in education results in students neglecting important traditional learning resources such as library books. The average there was 3.36, and we see a large 1.86 deviation around that average. And finally, the number one most controversial statement on the questionnaire was that the use of technology in education is successful only if teachers have access to a computer at home. And you can see here, again, the average was 3.64, but we had a whopping standard deviation of 2.55. In other words, we had two people answering seven that they strongly agreed with this statement, yet we had two other people answering number one or that they strongly disagreed. And of course, we had several other people providing middle-of-the-road responses. So there you have it, folks, our five most controversial statements about the use of technology in education. So why did we do this? Well, the idea was to illustrate that even among a small group of graduate students already interested in learning design and technology, 
that there can be substantial differences in terms of their views on technology as it relates to teaching and learning. Now, with this premise established, we'll begin to explore some of the underlying reasons why there may be such varied opinion about the role of technology in education. Okay, everyone, we're out of time for today. Have a great week, and I'll see you in Canvas.